What is going on Cardano friends? Welcome to the YouTube channel. My name is Farid and as a part of today's video, I've got a very special guest, Nick aka Nmelon from the CNFT Jungle team. Now he's actually going to be the CEO of this project and he's going to be joining me for today's interview in which we're going to be doing a deep dive on their particular platform. Now, if you guys have never heard of CNFT Jungle before, they're going to be an analytics marketplace. Um, they're also going to have a sniping tool for NFTs, and they're also going to help you out with alerts as it relates to NFTs. And so before we go any further, I do want to give you guys a quick heads up that if you guys do appreciate this type of content, please make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the Dab Central YouTube channel, make sure to hit that subscribe. And if you guys have any questions or comments about anything that Nick and I cover as a part of today's video, then please make sure to leave a comment down below. With that said, Nick, how are you doing? Hi, pleasure, pleasure to meet you and thank you for having me as well. Yeah, not a problem. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Lord, I believe who is actually the one that connected us and uh, kind of kicked off things for us to get this interview going. So thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, let's just get straight into it, man. So, you know, you're the CEO of CNFT Jungle. Do you mind giving us a brief little bit about your background as it pertains to blockchain? And then can you also talk about your team uh, as it relates to CNFT Jungle? Uh, sure thing. Um, uh, let's start with the blockchain part. So actually, let's start with the Web2 part. Um, so I've been working as a developer for about four to five years uh, before diving into Web3 space. And uh, I've been looking for uh, like the way out from Web2 to Web3 for a very long time. And then like I ended up just doing some side projects on my own because all the web free jobs just rejected if you don't have any prior experience or any anything to show so you kind of have to build up the portfolio so you know i was just thinking what well, what is of my interest and then the nfts were a hot topic uh, and then i thought okay like uh, what can i do what what's what, like what's my niche uh, and then like it's so, okay i was like into stock trading back then so i was thinking okay like nft trading uh, what relates to nft trading analytics and sniping and then I went to Ethereum Solana and I checked all those like uh, private sniping groups and their NFTs were like $20,000 uh, floor. I was like, okay, well, maybe there's, some, there's something. And then I go look into, uh, back then the Cardano was like a complete desert. There was absolutely <laughs> nothing. There's like three collections and uh, one marketplace. And I was like, okay, so if it costs 20,000 on Ethereum and I'm bullish on Cardano, maybe I can create the same thing on Cardano and then it's going to be worth $20,000 one day. Uh, so that's basically like uh, how I got here. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we started in October last year with this like little um, Chrome extension that like back in the CNFTIO, they just reserved the uh, listings for you. So you wouldn't have to manually like wait uh, for something to be listed. It just opened a new tab and auto reserved. And back then it was a huge advantage, like uh, crazy, <laughs> crazy times. And then you have right. to just hope for, for the other person to send you the asset. It's just even before smart contracts, which is just the escrow. Um, so yeah, so we started with that and now we're here, as they say. Uh, now we're doing like fully automated trading and smart contracts and stuff. Uh, so it's been a long way. It's been a great year. And uh, well, yeah, that's, that's the story. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's always interesting hearing about how different people come into crypto. Like I know for me, um, I had like a traditional stock background, right? Or at least a little bit of experience in that before coming into crypto. And it sounds like for you, um, it was like NFTs um, that really kind of drew you into the space. So again, it, it's really cool to, to hear that. But I, I think regardless of how we all get in here, we all have the same goal, which is to basically bring Cardano into mass adoption and, you know, into the into the hands of people that have never touched blockchain before so it's really cool to hear that you know what you're building especially with cnft jungle is making it easier not only for people to to get access to nfts but to also get access to the analytics behind that which i think is just as important as the nfts themselves right uh yeah we want to make it as easier and as uh, comprehensive so we want to like onboard both new people to show them like like what they can do using analytics sites so, like, they wouldn't just have to uh, make uneducated guesses so to help them out as well as well as on board like actual people who like really dive uh, in depth of stuff and like they care about like market depth or holders uh, like what are like, the whales of the collection and so we wanted like to play both spectrums and then give everybody a hand so to say. Yeah, and we're actually going to get into that in just a minute. We're going to be talking about, you know, all of the different tools that you guys offer. Um, but now that we've got the introduction kind of out of the way, could you please introduce us to CNFT Jungle? You know, what's the concept behind it? Um, who is it actually geared towards? And, you know, what are some of the services that it offers and some of the benefits that we can look forward to as users of the CNFT Jungle platform? 
All right, so in short, uh, CNFT Jungle is the uh, biggest real-time analytics uh, database on Cardano. Um, we try to make everything as close to like, uh, real-time as possible, whether it's sales, whether it's uh, new listings, whether it's uh, new collections minting, so people can uh, literally see, you know, like uh, how on Ethereum and Solana they do. Um, like, like, it was so surprising, by the way, like side note, that on Ethereum and Solana, they actually have those paid calendars that show mm -hmm. you what's minting right now. And it's so crazy right now, because, like, because it's there's so many collections that they actually charge you to see what's minting because like it's, it's a, such wow. such a long like uh, so much data to process. I'm just saying like in short, uh, it's a uh, the biggest real time analytics platform. We have sales, assets, collections, trends, so you can sniping portfolio, and uh, we plan much more. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually um, showing my screen right now to to the public. Um, and what we're looking at is the pattern section where, you know, right. we're looking at different NFTs and some of the, the traits associated with them. And it's really, really cool to see. And then even when I scroll down into the movement section, um, it kind of reminds me of like coin market cap, how in depth this is in terms of like information. It's very impressive. So we can see things, you know, um, using different timelines. We can see different floor prices, the market caps, the average prices. Um, again, I think one of the probably most thorough uh, marketplaces right now um, in terms of you know analytics and things like that on on the cardano blockchain so i'm personally a, a huge fan of what you guys are building man yeah just a side note thank you very much for that but just said that we're not a marketplace actually we don't have our own smart contracts we are an aggregator more mm -hmm. and then we just uh you know aggregate listings from other marketplaces and allow purchases from for all marketplaces uh, or at least our support ones uh but we don't have actually the marketplace functionality ourselves <laughs> got it. Got it. Thank you for yeah. No, thank you for clearing that up for me. Uh, and so, kind of moving things along, do you guys have a native governance token for your platform? Um, if not, you know, can you explain why? And if so, can you explain its utilities? Right. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a governance token. Uh, we were debating whether, like, we we're, we're going to get to the sniping part. Uh, we we're debating whether to make it for that part specifically because um, we have um, an NFT to get an access to sniping platform specifically. And then we wanted to make this NFT and permissions of it upgradable. And uh, we're now like thinking whether to make it like just a regular web two way that you're gonna have like some points for uh, using the platform. And then you're gonna, you can buy like different permissions, different um, like new, for example, um, additional alert amount and stuff, uh, or whether to make it uh, an actual token and then you would be uh, purchasing the same perks, but as NFT. So it's a debate, but for global utility token, not at the moment, However, with um, releasing, um, you know, down the line, maybe you're going to have multiple of products and then it would make sense to make sort, sort of a government token as a payment. Uh, but right now, it, we're going to see, especially with um, the recent news about regulations and um, SEC winning case against, uh, I forgot the name, but anyway, there's a, uh, it, it's a hot topic in the high debate, whether uh, of legality of it and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's it depends of... Uh, uh, project per project basis. So we're gonna really think about it, whether we even need it, and if we do, then how are we gonna uh, go about it? So. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair response, especially like you said, with all of the regulatory scrutiny right now within the crypto space. I think it's better to be safe than to be sorry, right? Now, For taking sure. a look at your guys' platform, I know the majority of the services that you guys offer are free services, right? So as a Cardano user, like I can jump onto cnftjungle.io and I can, you know, quickly start interacting and start getting data as to, you know, what's going on with my specific NFT collection, which I think is personally awesome. Now for users who are looking for like a more premium experience, I know you guys also have, um, I know an extension, um, but then a sniping tool. Do you kind of mind elaborating on some of those particular tools that, you know, may, may give you a competitive edge, but are also premium features of your platform? Right. Um, so yes, mostly majority of the features you see on jungle right now are public. So any analytics, any graphs, any, um, like real time assets that are minting and, uh, the trades, uh, real time and, um, uh, the calendar, the minting now, everything is uh, public. So you mm -hmm. don't have to have NFTs for that. And also recently we added the, uh, bulk buy and multi listing multi offers. So you can actually, uh, a little bit of a quality of life improvement. So you can, uh, don't have to like buy assets in, um, uh, one transaction for each, but can actually bulk some uh, and, uh, you know, do this nice stuff uh, without token, without anything. Uh, but for sniping and what sniping is, is in general is that 
Um, it basically allows you to get a better entry point uh, when purchasing NFTs. And what we allow you to do specifically is to select whatever programs you want to uh, look into NFTs for, for example, whether it's specific trades or uh, between rarity ranks or from under, under a certain price. And we notify you about when uh, exactly when the listing hits the smart contract. Mm -hmm. So like we try to reduce the latency as much as possible. And moreover, we build the transaction for you. So all you have to do in the end is just sign a transaction. And uh, like there's two ways of typing right now is manual and uh, automatic. And manual is basically if we open a new tab for you, like you would do in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. However, on this tab, you would have augmented information with uh, current collection floor, the asset rank, and uh, the difference between the tr uh, trade floors and the listing price. So you would visually instantly see whether this asset is worth buying because you would uh, like the differences would be highlighted in different colors based on the actual diff price difference. So, like for example, if the Trade for trade floor and the listing price is, uh, has a difference of 1,000 ADA, uh, which means basically a potential of 1,000 ADA profit. We would mark it as pink for you. And uh, so our users are kind of getting used to this like pink being good and mm -hmm. like green or like slightly less green, uh, greenish green would be like uh, less profit. So they can instantly visually see whether this asset has uh, high profit margins or not. And then all you have to do uh, is just to sign a transaction and then you get this asset. And then there's a second way, which we released uh, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago now. Uh, it's a uh, totally automated auto buy. Uh, and for that, you have to uh, install a custom NAMI wallet, basically, like just a custom wow. wallet, which connects the, it basically does the same way, but in the background, so you don't have to even sign a transaction. Wow. And it uses the same, uh, you know, the alert system that we currently have with all the permissions, all the rules you can set, uh, and it just buys things for you. And then moreover, on top of that, now we're mm -hmm. adding uh, auto listing and auto delisting. So soon you will be able to buy an asset, uh, set up the rules for how much you want to list it after buying, and then you would be able to even do stuff like, uh, so I want to buy this asset, you know, matching those trades below 200 ADA floor, and list it if the collection floor reaches 300 ADA mm -hmm. for, for example, for 300 ADA as well, and wow. then delist it if the collection floor reaches, you know, 500, for example. Right, so you'll be able to do those like uh, complex um, combinations of uh, mm -hmm. actions you want to do, you would, uh, which you would do uh, before manually, but we would try to automate all your trading as much as we can. Wow. So I just got two things to say. I think from an end user standpoint, the fact that you guys are able to automate all of that with the auto buy and the auto sell features, I think is so key. Right. So if you guys, I mean, if you guys don't understand what Nick just explained, basically, this is a, a, a completely hands off method to getting the best deals on NFTs right now on Cardano. So if there's a particular collection that you guys are interested in and, you know, you want to make sure that you guys are getting in at the lowest floor prices, definitely check out these particular features again being offered by CNFT Jungle. Now, I have a question about what you said specifically about the the alerts. Right. So. I know right now, you know, whenever you do something, for example, like through Google, you get push notifications on your cell phone. You know, how are you guys actually sending these these notifications? Are these going to my mobile device? Are we, you know, sending an email um, or is it something that has to be, you know, kind of locked within the CNFT jungle application itself? All right. So actually uh, right now, so you still an extension to like enable the whole system. And what mm -hmm. the, our extension does is basically reads uh, the um, alerts you set on the web and then it watches in the background for you know new listings to hit the the chain the smart contract and then you know if, if the listing also matches your alerts then it does like whatever you say it to do based on your settings and what uh, you can do in settings is to send an email or uh, send a mobile notification or open a new tab to manually snipe or auto buy so you can actually do everything uh, and moreover we uh, the Flint wallet on mobile has this deep linking feature and you can actually buy from the mobile notification as well. So you can basically click on notification, it would open the checkout on, inside the Flint wallet. Do you have enough balance on the Flint mobile wallet? You can actually uh, buy from mobile as well. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. No, I really, really appreciate that. Um, and I'm actually just kind of browsing through the CNFT predator sniping extension guide right now you know as you're speaking right. as well so very very cool to see all of this stuff um as as you're actually kind of explaining it in real time 
Now, we're going to kind of keep things moving here for the sake of time. I really do appreciate, again, your time here with us. And so next, I want to kind of hit on your guys' partners and what you guys are doing to kind of build relationships with the ecosystem, right? So can you tell us about your current partners um, and then what you guys are looking to, you know, kind of build over time in terms of relationships um, with other projects that may be doing something similar or, you know, could potentially be one of those marketplaces that you highlighted earlier that you guys are kind of pulling data from? Right. I'm not sure uh, what specifically to, you know, consider a partner, uh, but technically we partner with all the supported wallets, you know, like we mm -hmm. support how many, uh, seven wallets right now. And we try to, um, you know, I'll try to give the new wallets, which are doing work in there and, uh, making new, uh, improvements for Cardano, uh, like give them exposure as early as possible. Uh, you know, and add them as soon as they have, uh, you know, a working prototype and is, you know, secure, has some users. Uh, so we try, we try to add every wallet then we have, um, you know, you know, new marketplaces coming in all the time. So we have to, you know, adjust and add their listings as well. So we can consider marketplaces also partners, um, even though like we try to really, uh, be like, you know, marketplace agnostic and read everything from the chain, but sometimes it's not possible because some marketplaces have those listings off chain as well. So, uh, in general, we try to do everything, um, from the chain, which allows us to be re as real time as possible. Uh, but yeah, we, before actually the sniping platform being, um, NFT access based, we had this, um, uh, discount system, it was subscription based. So we had a discount system for you no know, partner collections. If you hold an NFT of that collection, you'd have, uh, some sort of exit discount. Uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, chilled Kongs, Yumi universe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and this goes on back then. Um, but yeah, in general, I think. Uh, the majority of the partnership will come in when we release our public developer API. And what that will allow projects to do is basically, you know, if you're a marketplace and you need to uh, get, you know, users wallet assets or user mm -hmm. wallet transactions or whatever, we will just, you know, give you this data and uh, we will allow marketplaces to launch way quicker because they won't handle, they, they won't have to handle all those infrastructure themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because right now it's a big hustle, um, because there's a, there's very few providers uh, available and, uh, usually the data they serve you are, is a raw data mm -hmm. and, uh, what we're going to serve is quite, um, is this data and augmented with already parsed trades already parsed, you know, because we have this tra automatic tra trace filtering. So we're going to basically handle all the categorization, all the parsing, all the filtering for you and serve you data in a nice format so you can launch your app, you know, in uh, 10 times quicker. Um, and that would, you know, help new marketplaces, new wallets, and um, in general, any any solo developer that wanted to build uh, his project, and uh, you know, stumbled upon this like like ste very steep entry uh, mm -hmm. of parsing uh, everything. Uh, so we would basically enable them to to create their projects as well rather soon. Got it. That's very cool to hear. So it sounds like you guys are looking to simplify the process of you know, like you said, parsing the data and actually being able to use it for other people coming along, which I think is a really huge key part in this thing. Now, you talked about wallets that you guys are supporting as well. I would actually consider those as partnerships as well. You know, I think the more wallets that you guys are able to integrate, the bigger, you know, user set you guys are also able to accommodate, right? And so the more users, the better for your platform. And I think the better for the current community because now they all have access to CNFT Jungle. Now, yeah. moving along. Let's chat a little bit about the development of the actual platform and where you guys stand, right? So we've highlighted the fact that you guys already kind of have um, the sniping tool built out. You guys are now working on parsing data and, you know, sharing that to make that easier for new builders coming to the space. But, you know, what are you guys working on now in terms of active development? Um, and then what's to come in the future? Like, what can we expect for CNFT Jungle to kind of dive into next once you guys have finished what you guys are actively building? All right. So in general, if you had browsed the jungle in the past months, you have seen probably about six redesigns to this point. Like we change uh, things all the time. And like re recently we changed, for example, the how the header looks and uh, all the you know, all the drop downs on the links from the header. So it looks more uh, polished, so to say. But from the tech side, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of changes to come. <laughs> like, let me let me gather my uh, my to do list. So. Let's start with the soonest one, I think, is the um, new portfolio view, uh, mm -hmm. which is going to include, um, like, you know, general stuff like your, your holdings, your current assets. Uh, but what's going to be unique for our specific cases 
where we're going to try to rank every single world on Cardano uh, and do world leaderboards, uh, as well as to show like this, um, sorry, I wouldn't call it a very advanced data, but very uh, rich data of like wallet relations. Uh, so mm -hmm. you'll be able to see which wallet transacts which, with which wallet and how much. And mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to see basically patterns and uh, that in turn will allow us to like kind of detect wash trading because we would know like uh, whether the collection is using um, a lot of burner wallets to buy trades and to you know kind of fake their volume so we'll be able to flag collections for that uh, and that all you know and and the, basically that snowballs uh into into a lot of different features um but yeah basically we're working right now on the this augmented portfolio view of your profit and loss you know since the beginning of uh since, since the beginning of nfts basically Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, adding tokens on top of that support of native tokens and their prices and also their um, token history, um, similar setup tools right now. That's an amazing project as well, but they're into tokens. Uh, so we're going to have something similar to them, uh, including all the NFT data uh, into one portfolio. And then we would allow to right now um, you can actually can't actually track all your mints. So it would allow to you to know what you have ever, ever minted and for how mm -hmm. much and uh, what you ever sold and for how much so we'll be able to like give you this uh, profit and loss like historical profit and loss for everything and then you'll be able to basically export everything you ever minted everything you ever sold uh, everything you ever purchased uh, for how much and uh, you know all this uh, all this nice stuff for you know for us people who do their taxes every year and uh, yeah. it's a key for them we're, so we're trying to get it ready before january so before the tax season um so that that's the first one uh then um, then there, there is going to be coming a backend switch uh, from old one to the new one. And uh, mm -hmm. the new backend is basically having a real-time categorization of all the transactions on Cardano since the beginning. Uh, so we would know basically everything about every wallet. And we're going to try to make it uh, blazing fast. So you'll be able to, you know, fake, like, we're, we're going to become the uh, Cardano scan, but we've augmented nft data you'll be able to see like all the trades instead of just asset name and uh we we're gonna try to make it uh like also user friendly it's more user friendly we have some ideas about so so we're gonna become a blockchain explorer as well and then um the transaction categorization uh is gonna allow us to you know actually create those wallet rankings and uh you know wallet leaderboards and then it's gonna allow us to uh, track all the whales and then have whales alerts uh, so you're gonna know like what wallets are doing. You're gonna have like you'll be able to follow wallets and receive, uh, you know what they're buying, uh, and then you'll be able to track. For example, right now you see all those patterns for uh, overall global markets, but you'll be able to see um, like well specific patterns, mm -hmm. like not just what everybody is doing, but also like what you know was probably you know uh, about the one million total you know value with ADA uh, is doing. So so that niche as well. And then uh, we're gonna redesign completely the uh, the asset page. So right now we have this uh, trading view graph and real time listing for sales. Uh, we're gonna move into a little bit uh, what's the name for it? That a great tool on Solana, I believe. Um, Rarity Sniper, I believe. Mm -hmm. So like, a lot of platforms actually have um, those. Um, they allow you to very compactly watch everything. So right now we kind of have those tab separation of like here's the graph and real-time trading for you and then here's the asset view here's the sales but what we want to kind of merge everything together and on one screen you will be able to also uh like see real-time movements of the collection as well as like newly minted assets here mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to buy everything uh using our card so we kind of want to like make the whole experience especially in the new mints when you know the, those like rapid listings rapid transactions you have to like be really um, like in the moment and have everything in one place preferably and the, mm -hmm. so that it updates itself so you don't have to actually constantly refresh uh, so we kind of want to make this um, trading view and uh, the buying process on sweeping process as easy as possible as proof as possible for you mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna redesign that as well <laughs> and then uh yeah <laughs> so that's, I mean, that, that's, that's quite the list that is quite <laughs> yeah, the list and I just kind of want to rewind a little bit and touch on yeah. some of those points, right? So you, you talked about minting history, which yeah. that was very impressive. Um, I think one of the key things for me there is like, 
a, a lot of times you try to understand whether or not you're in the profit on a particular collection but yeah. without the original minting history data it's really hard to do that right because you you naturally have to subtract whatever um ada you would have initially invested during the mint from whatever you know the floor price or whatever um additional um profit you may have made so being able to go back and have a one single place where you can take a look at all of your minting history i think is going to be huge there now you also talked about wash trading for a second too and i think that's also a huge benefit to the community there because we have seen instances where we see like really big sales come onto the platform i.e jpeg.store or even cnft.io and it's a huge sale where you know the community hears about it but there are instances where like you said it's wash trades where it's a particular sale between two known wallets or two wallets that a single person owns so yeah. the ability to be able to detect that i think is going to be very huge and i think the community will appreciate that very greatly and then very lastly you also talked about data exports for taxes and you took the words right out of my mouth like when you mentioned data exports the first thing that came to my mind was tax implications or tax reasons right like right now you know there's a lot of people who are making nfts and nfts are in like their first iteration right like we've had a few bull runs with tokens and governance tokens and altcoins but we never really have seen you know that much for nfts like last year was the really big um i would say like year for nfts and we're going to see that continue to happen right so it's like as nfts mature we're going to have to do a better job of keeping track of profits losses and the ability to use a data export you know for tax reasons i think is going to be huge so if you guys are able to pull that off i think it's going to bring a lot of eyeballs to cnft jungle not saying that there's not already a ton there but i'm just super excited to hear about those three things there man uh yeah i think it's been uh rather disorganized right now um uh, like it's gonna be we're gonna try to make it as uh you know comprehensive as possible because i know there's a lot of platforms that are going to allow you to export pure um, sales and purchases soon. Uh, but that excludes a lot of other things like, you know, as you mentioned, mints and stuff. Uh, so we're going to try to make it as um, as rich as possible. So it includes every single thing you did um, so that there's no like you wouldn't face potential issues with like mm -hmm. missing transactions or, you know, not uh, like, you know, maybe the IRS will think that you're not disclosing everything because there's some transactions that you haven't included because the platform didn't allow you to actually export that. So we're trying to try to you know, protect you as well to like have the absolute everything. And then uh, you'll be able to, you know, if you think that if you just like, you know how um, tax exporters allow you to select the transactions that you want to include or not, yep. you're going to try to go this way. For example, if there's a transaction that was just a transfer and there's no point to include that because you were moving either from wallet to wallet, so you'll be able to exclude that from the uh, a final export. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try to like give you as, as rich history as possible. Yeah. Um, and then when there's something else that I forgot to mention, uh, I lost my phone. Well, anyway, so yeah, we're, we're going to try to, um, as I said, release it before, um, if you know, remind me the U S tax season, I believe is January sometime. So we're going to try to release it in, uh, December, uh, before the end of the year, hopefully we'll manage, but yeah, if, wow. if not, then, uh. And then for the next tax year, but, oh. but really hope that we are going to release it this year. Yeah, no, I hope you guys are able to deliver on that too. And I'll definitely be keeping an eye out and, you know, covering those types of updates if you guys are able to get that out. Um, you know, I think anytime during the tax season, so the tax season, I believe, ends usually around the middle of April. It starts, like you said, um, early January-ish. So, you know, you do guys have a little bit of time. Obviously, the earlier, the better, because, you know, the more people can actually use the tool. Um, yeah. But again, I think that's really going to be huge. And it sounds like you guys may be the first to actually get that off on Cardano. Now, I'm not sure if any other blockchains have that feature already, but for Cardano, I'm personally not aware of any other tool that that's going to allow for us to do something like that. Regarding NFTs, I don't think so. There, there are um, a coin, coin tracker, coin something, coin tracker, I believe is partnered with OpenSea. So they can allow you to do it for uh, all the, the Ethereum and other chain collections and NFTs, but obviously they don't support Cardano as far as I know. Uh, unfortunately, it's been a pattern in a lot of things, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna try to solve uh, another specific problem on this one. Yeah, they'll, they'll come around, don't worry. It, it might they take just, a little bit must. of time, but yeah, they'll, they'll eventually come around. All right, so in, in the spirit of kind of keeping things moving along, um, I've got three, I believe, questions for you, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So I wanna just kind of highlight first off a little bit about security. 
Um, and then I believe you're going to give us just a brief demo of the actual um, NFT sniping platform. And then we're going to wrap up with how people can get in contact with you if they're interested in finding out more about the CNFT con platform. And so moving next into um, security, right? So I know right now there's been like a lot of issues regarding blockchain security and a lot of information. Now, being that you guys are a data aggregator, you know, I think that that takes a little bit of the responsibility off of you because you guys aren't necessarily uh, managing the direct data. You guys are just kind of leveraging data that other marketplaces are providing to you, if I'm if I'm understanding that correctly. Yeah. But, um, you know, that aside or understanding that, you know, have you guys taken any steps to enforce users information that's stored on CNFT jungle? Um, are you guys doing any audits now? I know you guys said you guys don't have any smart contracts, uh, but like, what are you guys doing in terms of security to make sure that whatever information is passed on by users of CNFT jungle um, is kept safe and, you know, not exploited or fall into the wrong hands? It's a very good question. I have a very good answer. So it's very easy to keep data secure if you don't actually collect any data. So uh, everything that you do in CNFT jungle, you basically only entry point for you is uh, connecting a wallet like you would do in any, uh, any DAP. And, uh, and that's it. We only have your address and then some, you know, if you create uh, an alert, we just save the alert. We don't actually store absolutely anything else. The only thing we used to do is um, uh, for the extension, if you wanted to ask to send you an email, then we had to, you know, somehow get your email. So you would input the email. Uh, but then even that we stored like locally on you within the sort of database. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And as you mentioned, we don't have actually um, smart contracts, so we don't uh, thankfully, we don't have to do audits because they are very costly and long. Um, so yeah, so um, I'm not sure we, we there is sort of uh, one feature that we would want to have a smart contract mm -hmm. for, but it's a, like a very long term one and it's like mm -hmm. on chain snapping. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, maybe it's not even necessary down the line, but that's something that we would have to get audit for, but but not the moment. Um, but then there is um, the only thing that we have like sort of security issues or security. Uh, uh, that we, we have to watch is uh, since we have NFT token access to the platform, right? Uh, there are ways to sort of uh, fake that you own an asset uh, and that get access to the platform. So uh, there actually uh, was one person that uh, did contact us and mentioned this vulnerability, uh, but there are ways to prevent it as well. Um, so yeah, so um, actually I was surprised that there are like quite a bit of people that are helpful enough that they're gonna tell you about vulnerability without um sort of um abusing it too much yeah. there are people who actually who so it's uh, i'm um a part of i'm a part of majority of alpha groups and when people like you know share this information usually and uh there are like two types of people one who taps me directly usually like hey there's a vulnerability of this uh i'll let you know just like you know just let me use this for free afterwards and then let me know like what's wrong and then there, there's another type of people who doesn't know i'm in a chat myself and then it's like Hey guys, I found out this bug there. Like, we, like let's just like abuse it as much as we can before they figure it out. And then yeah. <laughs> little do they know, I'm actually in all this chat as well. But yeah, so it's it's been like a you know uh, this the sniping community in general is uh, people who are mostly trying to you know find ways how to get around the system. So it's it's, it's always interesting what people come up with. And um, majority of the features, for example, we added for sniping is uh, been just, you know, our users thinking of ways how to make it better. Um, for example, one of the recent ideas was that, um, you know, we have all this, like, um, as I mentioned, like trade floors between listing uh, difference and then we highlight that. And then there's like one guy sitting as like, but how about you actually let us to set an alert already including like the at minimum profit we want to make instead of nice. you know, going through the slow i'm like oh yeah that that actually cuts like three steps so it makes it even better so yeah, yeah. so so things like that and majority of those like um features that you know like now in, in inside it seems like obvious like oh yeah how didn't i think about this but um like when you build this from 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 scratch uh it went through like many iterations and uh it, it, it's been quite nice that people are quite quite helpful and they want to help you as well and it's, it's been a very pleasure experience. I'm not sure how it's in uh, other chains, but Cardano has been very welcoming in terms of, you know, just, just the community mm -hmm. and uh, developers. Uh, so yeah, super happy about this. I I could not agree with you more on that particular note. I know, especially like with a lot of different projects with bug bounty programs, it doesn't sound like in your case that you guys had a bug bounty program, but for somebody in the community to be able to find an exploit and not try to abuse it, I think again, not only speaks about that particular person, 
but the community as a whole, because that is the type of attitude that we've kind of garnered here, right? Um, we saw yep. a very similar thing where um, the community raised some, you know, red flags before the push of the Vassal hard fork and ultimately we're able to, you know, kind of highlight a few things that IOG may have missed, right? So I don't think that there's ever anybody that's too big within the space that, that can't make a mistake. Um, but the fact that the community doesn't necessarily hold it against them and, and say, hey, you know, you guys are building a crappy product. Instead, they turn around and actually tell them, hey, this is how we can improve it. Again, speaks to the fact that everybody here wants to see Cardano grow. Now we're at about, I would say, 35 minutes into the interview. I know before we jumped on here, we talked about getting a brief demo of the CNFT sniping tool. So what I'm going to do, Nick, if it's OK with you, is I'm going to go ahead and um, just share my screen and we're going to let you um, mm. kind of walk us through a brief demo of the CNFT sniping tool. Yeah, yeah, totally fine. Let's do that. All right, let's go ahead and do it. All right, guys, so we've talked about what CNFT Jungle is, a lot of the features that they provide, a little bit about their development and their security. And so now Nick is nice enough to give us a brief demo of the CNFT sniping tool itself and exactly how it works. And so I'm going to just kind of turn it over to you, Nick. Um, let us know exactly what you're doing uh, and how people within the community can actually get access to some of these awesome tools you guys are building. Sure thing. Um, so this is basically a platform demo and uh, usually all the alerts start on this screen. Uh, which is called start hunt and hunt is the internal name um, of like oh, inside the platform for the alert that's how we call alerts um and yeah we can there's a lot of features uh, but i'm going to just show the most basic example of what like the most uh, people use it for um for example like there's a recent mint of uh, raccoon syndicate i believe they they started the uh, season two or whatever so if i were to want to if i were to want to snap the raccoon syndicate i would just search it but it's mm -hmm. right now in the recent, so I can just select the collection. That's the first step, so you have to select the collection first, so we know what they're actually trying to snipe. And then uh, there's a concept of like rules, uh, and rules are basically, you know, um, what do I want to do? What do I want to snipe for? Right? And there's a tons of different rules. Um, like some rules are acceptable only for higher tiers, uh, but in short, for example, like the most we use, I believe, is match traits. And uh, that basically means that I want to look for specific traces inside the collection. And the, here I have uh, all the traits that the collection has. There's a huge list of them uh, for coons. But for example, I'll choose uh, whatever, uh, Genus Wood. Doesn't sound like uh, something I know, but anyway, white space, white space helmet, and it's quite rare. So 0.27% mm -hmm. of all assets only has it. So I'll select a trait and then, you know, if that's it, but usually combine, uh, people combine uh, traits with price. So I'll type also price. And uh, for example, I want the raccoon syndicate with this trait and below uh, below 300 data, right? Wow. So I'll type max price of 300 data. And then um, you can also the preview um, hunt results. So you'll be able to like show listings, but I believe uh, since this trait is rare, there wouldn't be any listings. But uh, if there was a listing with those params, so um, white space helmet below 300 data, you'll be able to see the current listings for that uh, hunt here and we do that just so you're you know if you set up so, some alerts you want to make sure that you're sniping for this some specific thing uh, so you kind of give you a preview of that uh, right here and then you click start the hunt and it would uh, sort of query your alert mm -hmm. and then you can go to the alert list and see it here so it's raccoon syndicate max price 300 match trades of this uh, white space helmet trade and then there's a collection just in case um so yeah that's it uh, th that's that's how easy to set up alert and then uh, what it does in the background is it watches for all the new listings uh, for all the collections but if one listing will match all those parameters mm -hmm. it's gonna notify you and um, let me try to find the some example of the manual sniping for example um, so this this is the sample page for the how the manual sniping would work and as I mentioned before, you would have some um, like additional data for the snipe, so you can decide whether this asset is worth sniping for. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, you see um, we uh, fetched the variety rank for you, and we fetched the collection floor. And uh, for example, if this list, uh, if this asset was listed for 300 data, you would be able to see, okay, like so, if I buy this, then I would be down to 171 ADA because the collection floor is 28. And then you also have the bre breakdown by trades, so you're able to see like how much. Uh, all the like the cheapest listing for this trade excluding this asset is worth and you can visually see like whether this snipe is a good one and in this case it's always not a good one because no matter how you look at it you'll be down some item 
Um, right. So, so that's basically it. And then you have things like, so this is a so-called um, passive sniping. Um, mm -hmm. You set up the alerts, and then you like you can leave the laptop, and you're gonna get notified with sound if it hits. And then there's also things like live feed, and what this is is basically gonna show you all the listings that match all your snipes in one window, uh, and then you'll be able to buy from here as well. And then you have your history uh, for for your previous alerts, and then you have a couple settings to select the wallet and stuff. And if you want to, for example, receive mobile notifications. Um, so that's very briefly, and then you can you know. Uh, set up the auto buy as I mentioned so uh, not mm -hmm. only you would uh, be getting this tab but it would also uh, if you have uh, the custom wallet installed predator wallet so to say uh, yeah, I was testing something so it doesn't open anyways predator wallet installed that's sort of a copy of NAMI wallet with um, our some backend changes to allow for auto buy um, yeah and you you know this snipe with that wallet would automatically buy it for you instead of you trying to sign something uh, and then you can do things like, you know, duplicate hunts, edit hunts, and then all those like uh, little controls that you can do to make your life easier so that, you know, people who set hundreds of alerts don't have to actually manually, uh, you know, start it from here. They can duplicate it and, uh, you know, just in, just in some quality of life improvements uh, for people who really maximize the power of uh, the platform. Um, but I guess the sort of the core here is the uh, amounts of different um, advanced rules we have. And it's not, not only allows you to match by price, rarity, and trades, but also for uh, like very complex things like uh, matching the trade value, right? So if a project has, you know, a, a trade of street, and then uh, like for example, it has Wood Street One, Wood Street Two, Wood Street Three, and all the other street names, you don't have to actually set all the wood trades. You can actually just say, I want to match trade wood, and uh, select the trade category of street, and it would match all the streets that have wood in the name, right? So it kind of saves you time. Right. Uh, or, you know, search by rewards and stuff. So there's a tons of tons of um, specific things you can do um, that we allow you to do. Uh, you know, as you can be as specific as you want, basically. You can even search for, uh, like, you know, Pavia areas or Play Nation uh, Metaverse areas. You can select, I want to watch um, X coordinate between 50 and 100. Wow. and y between 75 and 80 right so so basically uh or like this has been developed mm -hmm. since last october right so over the more than a year of um you know user feedback and uh user suggestions we like i believe there's like about 30 rules right now that, like the most important thing about them is they're all combinable with each other right so you can uh, you're not limited by, uh, you know, us saying that you can only search by rare price and rarity. That's it. Mm -hmm. You can combine all the 30 rules at once and, uh, yeah, and be as specific as you want. And that's just, th this is just uh, for, you know, so-called, there's also different hunt types, right? Mm -hmm. This is just a basic alert. And then there's also so-called Zinc, which is a market overview alert. So you'll be able to do stuff like if the collection reaches a certain floor, notify me. If the collection increases in volume by this much, notify me. And then there's a bundle snipe, which slaps bundles. And then yeah. there's, a, you know, all the coming soon, like loan snipes and uh, instinct is so-called, like instinct is the automated trading where, where mm -hmm. you'll be able to uh, auto list stuff after auto buying. Um, so there's other things to pl plan here as well. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the even the current alert system is quite powerful because it kind of, you know, covers the whole spectrum of uh, if you're dealing with NFTs. And I can't wait to get into tokens with our system. That's going to be fun as well. Yeah, so much coming to CNFT Jungle, you guys. If you guys are not excited as I am, then I don't know what you guys are watching. But that was really impressive. Nick, I want to say thank you for that demo. A few things that I want to just kind of highlight, and then we're going to wrap up this video. Um, the UI, very simple, user-friendly. Like, this is what we need, right? And then the logic, I love how it was like super simple. It was like, hey, you know, if if this happens then you know do x y and z for this particular yeah. trait at this particular number you know i think it, it really does a good job of abstracting a lot of the different layers that kind of make these mm -hmm. these calculations very complex and it makes it very simple like you guys had drop downs in uh, almost all of the fields that you've shown so far to where you know if i'm not even sure what's available as an option 
you have you have everything already listed so i love the fact that you guys are making this very simple for people to pick up and super simple to like start creating i guess you can call them queries right or different um hunts right yeah uh, on, alerts on the like platform. simple term is alerts um and yes as you can see like almost every element here it has a tooltip right mm -hmm. so like you can, you can know what's hunt navigation what's hunt controls uh what is should trigger if so we try to like because um, we're aware that in general sniping and the amount of features we have can scare people off. So we mm -hmm. want to like make sure that everything is crystal clear. What what is this? What what does this do? Um, so that there's no confusion even for, even if the person like sees the platform for the first time. Um, so it's kind of was was the priority. I think you guys have nailed that very well. Um, again, if you guys are interested in finding out more about the CNFT jungle sniping tool, I'm going to be leaving the links to that as well as all of the additional documentation surrounding CNFT jungle down in the description below. Go ahead. Just, just last thing, I believe. So, um, yeah, I wanted to show how to get the access to the platform. Uh, mm -hmm. The base access is uh, with this NFT is called Jungle Hunter Lifetime and Pass, and you can buy it on JPEG store. Um, the current floor is 700 ADA, so it's quite a steep entry as well, but that's, that's how much people value uh, the platform currently. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that like this particular platform is basically the only thing right now in jungle that is kind of private under uh, NFT access, but all the other features are, are public. Got it. So I'll also go ahead and leave the link to that particular NFT collection, guys. You guys will need to get access to that pass. If you guys are looking to get access to all of the premium features within the sniping tool that Nick just showed off. So in closing, you know, for members that are hearing about you for the first time today, and let's say that they're very interested in, you know, kind of joining your platform. What is the easiest way that they can do that? Right. So the I'm available on Discord basically every day, uh, almost uh, answering questions rapidly uh, as as they come. But uh, yeah, I think the quickest one is Discord. Like you can know, always uh, send us DM on, tw on Twitter to me personally or to Jungle Twitter. It's gonna be me anyway everywhere. So uh, yeah, but the quickest is Discord and it's preferable. Got it. Got it. I will go ahead and also leave the link to their Discord then down in the description below. I think that's going to do it. We are a little bit over time, but again, Nick, I really want to thank you um, not only for, you know, accepting this call, but also taking the time to actually give us a thorough demo of CNFT jungle. And so again, if you guys are interested in finding out more about them, check out the links down in the description. They're going to be one of the top right now analytics, um, sniping and alert um, platforms building on Cardano. And so with that said, Nick, any closing thoughts before we wrap up the video? Um, no, just really thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Um, and yeah, uh, always, always here for everyone. If anyone has any questions, my all pleasure. right. Well, thank you. And I look forward to hopefully having you on for additional interviews as you guys continue to develop on Cardano. Again, thank you for your time. If you guys found some of the information in this video to be helpful, then please make sure to tap that like button. If you guys are new to the Dap Central YouTube channel, then please make sure to hit that subscribe. And if you guys have any questions about anything that Nick and I talked about, then make sure to leave those down in the description below, or excuse me, in the comment section below. With that said, we will see you guys in the next video.